Welcome to Man360, I'm your host Brian. On today's program, I sit down with the director of Southern Florida's Fellowship of Christian Athletes program, Coach Charlie Weatherby. Coach Weatherby and I had a great conversation about his upbringing and what led him to change his life at an early age. Our outdoor segment today will include a conversation about the power and importance of friendship in the life of a man with my good friend Aaron Malone. Then we head to the Naval Shipyard in Boston, Massachusetts to see an amazing 227-year-old ship that's still in commission, and then we'll end our time with a 360-degree review of today's program. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man360. Coach Charlie Weatherby was a multi-sport athlete his entire life growing up in Kansas and was the head football coach at one time for Utah State, Navy, and the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. Coach Weatherby now heads Southwest Florida's chapter of Fellowship of Christian Athletes and is able to use his love for Jesus and years of sports knowledge to help guide students in life. He shared about his journey with Christ and also shared with me some practical ways we can pray for young, impressionable athletes. Here's my conversation with Coach Charlie Weatherby. Coach Weatherby, thank you for being on our program, Man360. Thank, thank you, Brian. And um, yeah, I just wanted you to share a little bit kind of about your athletic history and kind of background so people can kind okay. of get a, a system of how you, what you've done. You bet. I, uh, I was blessed. I was raised in a family. My dad was a coach, had played athletics in high school and in junior college mm -hmm. and in college. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, kind of brought us up in an athletic background. It was a it was a great opportunity. My dad ended up being an administ in administration, became a principal of the high school okay. I was at, and uh, so that made it a little tougher in high school. Exactly. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we uh, we grew up in a in a small community called Fort Scott, Kansas. Okay. Uh, about eight thousand people, and uh, just had a great great time. Um, you know, growing up in that town. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about your journey of faith, you know, to Jesus and kind of what that looks like, that transformation. You bet. I, once again, I was blessed. I had a mom and dad that were uh, really uh, grounded mm -hmm. in, in God's word and uh, believers and took me um, I took me to church. I told everybody, used to tell everybody I had a drug problem. I got drugged to church <laughs> every Sunday, every Wednesday, That's awesome. you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, they, uh, they were, it didn't matter if you were sick or not, you're going to church. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so yeah, what happened was, um, a friend of, of mine and I, we would sit up in the balcony as we got a little older and I was 12, we were both 12 years old mm -hmm. and the pastor at this First Baptist Church at that time, he 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 quoted a, you know some good scripture, but he also stated that that you're going to live eternity somewhere, yeah. either in heaven or in hell. Yeah. And then he painted a picture of hell. Yep. And you know all I could think of was being on a rock pile <laughs> with my pickaxe and, and a chain and ball on my foot. Right. You know, down in the hot you know fire. Yeah. And, and every time I stopped, I'd get whipped by yeah. Satan, you know, type yeah. of deal. And, and then he picture, he, he gave me a picture, painted a picture of heaven mm -hmm. that was hundreds of thousands of times better than anything yeah. that you had here on this earth. And so at that time, I, my friend and I, we both went forward That's in that awesome. church and accepted Jesus Christ as our personal yeah. Lord and Savior. It was just uh, an amazing uh, awesome. time. I'll never forget it. It was, uh, it was in my seventh grade year, yeah. and it, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on with me. I was a not a very good student, mm -hmm. and so I was always fight, always in fights. Yeah, uh, I was a real good athlete, but uh, the only reason I was in a real good athlete because that's all I ever did. You know, that's all I wanted to do. Yeah, um, but uh, I had this kid on the floor, and I was whooping him pretty good in the gym floor. <laughs> And it, I felt somebody grab a hold of the back of my neck and lift me up off the floor. And it was our PE teacher, which is a big old guy named Tex Crutcher. He had played offensive line somewhere, SMU or somewhere. Right. Big old boy. And he took me down to his office. Yeah. And he said, hey, Charlie, he says, this is where you're headed. He said, you're headed to 
you know, detention centers, you're yeah. headed to jail, yep. maybe prison one day, yep. you know, is that the direction you want to go? Or mm. you can decide that you want to be a good student, yeah. quit fighting, yep. that you can make the grades that you need to. You may get a chance to go on and play high school, college, maybe even pro yeah. as an athlete. You've got that kind of ability. He says, mm -hmm. but you're not going to leave this office until you make a decision. Wow. And I just started crying. Yeah. And I said, Coach, I want to go this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was kind of a defining moment mm. in my life. It all happened pretty much at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, I went forward into church. I don't know if it was right before that or right after that. Yep. But things just really started changing at that point. So it's so interesting. A coach yeah. made a huge difference in my life. And it's interesting, too, that obviously now you're the director of Fellowship of Christian Athletes here in Southern Florida. And it's interesting how even what you're doing now, it sounds in some ways, is how you were kind of shaped and molded and formed towards Christ, you know, in that kind of athletic field. So what do you feel like you're doing now to really help to instill those principles, those godly principles in athletes, you know, and you come in contact with all different sports and different things too. What do you feel like you're doing to instill some of the things that you've learned in your walk into your athletes? Well, here's, uh, you know, kind of our... Uh, emphasis in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes right now is mm -hmm. we want to get to the heart of the coach. So therefore, the heart That's of good. the coach changes, then he's going to change the heart That's of the really athlete. Good. So, so we're working real hard with coaches. We have several coaches Bible studies. That's awesome. That we're working with, yep. and it's every sport. It's not just football. It's not just basketball. It's not just your, you know, big sports, so to speak. Yeah. Um, it's it's amazing what I've seen with the with the uh, coaches' hearts changing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're what we're trying to do is instill um, godly characteristics yep. in the coach and the kid. Yep. And uh, to do that, it has to be a transformation from the inside exactly. out. Yeah. And to do that, the heart's got to change. And and the only way to get to the heart is to through, I believe, the power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And, uh, there, until they accept that and mm -hmm. are ready to submit to that, yep. um, then you're not, not going to see a whole lot of change. Yeah, so. for sure. So I, and real quickly, can you share, you know, a lot of men obviously watch sports. That's kind of a, <clears throat> can be some a religion for some men. Mm -hmm. I know in Denver, you know, we have the Broncos and all those guys. But, um, you know, how can men that see these athletes on television specifically, you know, how can they pray um, you know, for them? And, and what are some of the challenges? I know you've been around some of those athletes and some of the professional athletes, college athletes. So how would you say, how would you ask and think they should pray for some of these athletes? Well, I think for their character, for their heart, for the inside to change, you know, yeah. because everybody works on the physical. I mean, they all yeah. want to run faster, jump higher, lift heavier weights, you know, all that. that yep. And they work really hard at that. But to, to build from the inside out, build yep. the heart, to build the character, to build the love for fellow man, for, for the fellow human beings yeah. on this earth. Yeah. Uh, that's where it all starts, I believe. And I think what happens a lot of times in professional athletics is you get guys that have uh, been awarded mm -hmm. um, beyond their character building they they've got yeah. the physical talent they've got all yeah. of that but they haven't <laughs> right. developed the inner yeah. the inner part of them and so i think that's why we see some athletes not acting the way that we feel like right. you know they probably should act yeah for sure well can you pray i you know you know the first coach of any child is their dad right you know yeah. that's the one that really helps them to no to doubt. be the person they need to be mm -hmm. but can you just pray for you know men that have maybe a kid that's in athletics, that they would navigate those waters properly and correctly mm -hmm. and be consulting the Holy Spirit, consulting God. I know that obviously there's the, the ROI, the return on investment of getting yeah. them into school and getting yeah. them in a good college, but just praying that God would really direct men and their kids. You betcha. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, Lord Jesus, you know uh, the hearts of uh, the young men you know the hearts of their fathers. You know the hearts of the coaches. And uh, Lord, uh, we just pray uh, not only for Southwest Florida, but for the for the country. Yes, God. Uh, that uh, that Your Holy Spirit would just uh, would just uh, penetrate their hearts. Yes, God. Lord, and that they would answer the call. Uh, I know a lot of times uh, men are 
are afraid to show uh, mm -hmm. their weaknesses, mm -hmm. afraid to show that uh, that they do have to depend on something besides themselves, Lord. Yeah. And we just pray uh, that that they would depend upon you, Lord. Yes, and in everything they do, they would work at it with all their heart to yes, please Jesus. you, uh, not their earthly master, Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lord, we just thank you uh, for who you are and what you did for us on the cross and coming back to life, Lord. And of course, during this Christmas season, uh, you know, coming here and be born uh, to a Virgin yes, Mary, Lord. Lord. We just thank you uh, for taking uh, the uh, the lowly life as a as a human mm -hmm. on this earth and and living it out for us and showing us uh, the direction and how we should live and what we should do and how we should act. And Lord, we pray that we could do that in a way that would put a smile on your face, yes, Lord God. Jesus. In your precious name we pray, amen. 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 Coach Weatherby, thank, thank you for you, being on the program. All right, Appreciate you thank and you, uh, thanks. Appreciate it. Welcome to another outdoor segment here, Man 360. And again, I got my friend Aaron here. And I wanted to talk to Aaron just a little bit. We're in the great outdoors. We finally got out I know it's been in the woods. Too long. Yeah. Any any time longer than we think is appropriate is too long, right? <laughs> right. So I want to talk to Aaron a little bit about friendship, you know, our relationship, kind of share a little background story about, you know, us being friends. Sure. And um, and then also just the importance of rest for men. Um, you know, how our relationship changed when you had kids and because uh, I don't have any kids. Right. So that just kind of that dynamic and just talking about the importance of, you know, having friends and having friendships as guys that are meaningful. Right. So, you know, so we have kind of activity friends, people we just kind of hang out with. Right. But, you know, having a real authentic friend. And I want to kind of go through and talk a little bit about what really marks a good friend right. in that way, I think is important. So, um, yeah, I mean, when you think about friendship, I think for guys, it it's really an interesting kind of a topic, I guess, because, again, we're more activity motivated. Yeah. Yep. You know, we're not like, I mean, you and I do that where we're like, hey, let's meet at Starbucks and go hang out and just talk, you know, just chat it up. But most of the time it's, you know, hey, come over, let's do something, let's hang out, let's go outdoors, you know, because we right. both love to hike. But actually, which is hilarious, Aaron was one of the youth yeah. in my youth group. So he was one of the, you know, hundreds of kids or whatever that we had gone through Way in back. ministry back in the day. Um, and then Aaron was actually, he was a small group leader for me. Um, you know, so he was a great guy, you know, we connected, you know, he was just, again, a kid in my youth group, but it's so funny. So as a youth pastor, this is really the most hilarious thing. You think you were like so many years older than the kids that you're pastoring. Right. And, you know, we're about 10 years, I think apart, mm -hmm. but it's like, you know, once you, once your students and some of those people get older, you know, Yolanda and I have been in town in Colorado now for, I think, uh, be 19 years this year coming up. And, uh, you know, we've just, Aaron and I've kept touch, kept connected, um, and just some of those those things. So, Aaron, as that, you know, what do you think is first for you? You know, you have other friendships, obviously. Well, I know you're, I'm your very best right. friend. Very, very <laughs> best friend. Although he gives me more stuff, which is really awesome. <laughs> and he knows I'm gifts is my love language. So it's like my primary love, love language is gifts. My secondary is gifts. Aaron, what are your love languages? Uh, quality time and physical touch. So you can have one of those two. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all going to pick the, <laughs> probably the, the one that we know should be picked. So, um, but yeah, it's interesting to think about, you know, just all the, the kind of the things that, that we've gone through just in, in friendship. Um, but for you, you know, you have obviously other friends than me. Sure. What, you know, what is, what is important for you in a quality in a friendship as a guy? Like what is it, what's a, a important quality to you? Um, I think somebody that is honest, but also just somebody that you can have fun with. I mean, if you can't have yeah. fun with them and it's like, okay, we got to have like a really God right. time all the time. <laughs> right. Jesus hung out a lot. Is that physical lot. touch? I'm not physical Probably. touch. Probably. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Jesus hung out with people a lot. And yeah. just when I say hang out, like just hung out. Right. You know? And so uh, I think that that's a really important attribute is like you got to be able to hang out with somebody and that it, that it becomes organic in yeah. the, um, we were talking about this, I heard this at a recent, recent conference I was attending, um, where that we get together and we don't have uh, like a sin management session, you know, where right. it's like, hey, porn, have you, where, where have you messed right. up? Yeah, what, right. what have you been doing lately? Right. Huh? You doing okay with that thing we talk about like every right. time? Right. Um, and instead of having a sin management session, to have a glory management session, like That's what really is God good. doing? in your life where where are you going from glory to glory like what is god doing that's awesome and where do you feel like he's calling you to next you know instead of uh having like a uh and i think christian men that can be a problem where we Absolutely. we have like a bash fest of how bad we are yeah. and how we're not living up to the standard of god and forget that we 
have Christ living in us and talk about what is God doing and how can we do that even more? Yeah. You know, I think that's really, I mean, that's a really good point. I think as, as Christians, you know, what's that balance? Because Mm -hmm. we don't, you know, like when you and I are around each other, um, you know, and I know that there's kind of like a, for lack of a better term, kind of a code of conduct, Sure. but it's like, I don't want to just have that when I'm just around you. I mean, I want that to be a part of my, you were talking very interesting. We were talking on the way up here and you were saying, you know, you feel like God is really shifting some things in you that you're like, it's not like you just want to put some, you know, put the pedal of the metal for a while and kind of really get really good with God, so to speak, and then kind of like let off and kind of cruise and coast. Yeah. And I feel like one of the things for me, and I really appreciate about Aaron, is that, you know, we've been able to be accountability partners for a while. Um, and it's not always a big heavy revy thing all the time, but it's just really knowing that I, that some of it too can be where we just are kind of like, we just talk about stuff and we're not trying to solve anything necessarily. Right. I think that's really, really hard for Christians, especially Christian guys, because we want to solve stuff. We want to fix things. We want to, you know, make things, those things right. But I think even like you said too, Aaron, it's important that, you know, even to realize what Jesus did with his disciples and just the relationship that he had with them. You know, we were talking about that as well. Yeah. It, it wasn't just, let's go, you know, win the world. And, and I, you know, this is going to be really important, you guys. You know, I'm only going to be around for about three years in this capacity. And then I'm going to leave and then I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, but you need to figure this out. Right. It was like, hey, you know, you guys need to have that koinonia, have that relationship, have those friendships. Yeah. And I think family. it's really family. family is big. Family. And even in churches, too, you know, you look at that, you know, for the percentage, which is really sad, you know, the, I guess the, the statistic or whatever yeah. that it was out there, it says, you know, if you get the guy, you get the family. Right. And I think that's one thing, too, for Aaron and I, because I know that that's really the most important thing. You know, we're friends and we hang out and we have time and, you know, we love our wives. You know, Aaron loves his kids deeply, yeah. but we love God more than more than we care about each other. Right. You know, so as guys, we have to have that. You know, we can't be like, man, that guy will die for me. That's whatever. Well, Jesus was the first person to die for you, not to get ultra religious or be super churchy. And we've got to realize that concept and then really live that out in one another and pushing each other to excellence. You know, that's one thing, too, that encouraged me even when we were driving up. And I I told you that to Yolanda the other day. I said, you know, one thing I appreciate about Aaron is that when I hear him say things or hopefully when I say things to him, that it really perks or, or kind of tweak something in me to think, you know, am I doing everything that I can do to live, you know, at the speed that God wants me to live at, right? right? Not getting burned out. You know, some yeah. of that is also taking a break, resting. So I kind of want to talk a little bit yeah. too about, you know, when you had kids, that obviously changed our relationship, you know, which wasn't bad. And we kind of saw that on the horizon. And I was coming, like, yeah. Aaron and Ashley got pregnant. Well, Ashley got pregnant, <laughs> right? We say they got pregnant, really Ashley got pregnant, but it was like this, t- this, this process of having these kids. And how did that really change you know, our relationship. Yeah. I mean, it definitely made it to where obviously not as much time. Um, and again, we knew that that was coming. Yeah. So it wasn't like a shock or anything, but, um, to be aware of that, to be, uh, particularly if one, um, of the two guys, you know, if maybe it's a couple guys, you know, new children, my, my kids are like one and a half and three and a half. I mean, it is like, and two boys. I mean, <laughs> It's like Donkey Kong. Two Tasmanian Kong. Yeah. angels. Yeah, it's like Mario versus Donkey Kong, like every day in my house. I mean, it's great awesome. It's, it's great. Um, but it's, it takes a lot of energy from both my wife and myself to yeah. just be with our boys, take care of them, make sure they're doing well, you know, all that stuff. And um, so that the time that we do have together, just be um, more intentional with that. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate, Brian, that the, the I don't need to hear from him giving me a hard time when I tell him that I can't meet up with him because I got to be with the kids right. and my wife. Him giving me a hard time about that, like, oh, come on, man, you're always with him. Bail on him. Like, let's right. hang out. Come on, dude. Like, we haven't seen each other in a month. Right. That doesn't make me want to go hang out with him more. Right. So when That's he goes, really dude, I understand, like, yeah, that sucks, okay, that we, we had that plan, but we had to rearrange, all right, let's try and figure out, like, a couple weeks from now, you know, and, and that understanding really helps out a lot and continues to build that relationship, because I know that even though he maybe even didn't have kids and, and doesn't have kids, so he doesn't quite understand that concept right. he understands that that is important and that needs to come first at this season of my life Absolutely. so that's, that builds our friendship and i can trust him and know like brian's got my back even when i can't be with him fit you know like present all the time yeah and i mean we love and obviously we're in the outdoors you know it's this segment um you know we aaron and i love being in the mountains we love being outdoors you know he does a lot of stuff with his channel gideon's tactical um we were even talking about that and he said um, you know, you don't need to do this big promotional, you know, infomercial speech about how great I am at doing reviews and getting into tactical, whatever. And I really appreciate that because he said, you know, I just want to invest in you like you invested in me yeah. when you first started the channel. Right. Um, I feel like, too, you need to have somebody that, that believes in you Yeah. as a guy, you know. And I feel like, too, there's sometimes where you have relationships or friend relationships 
And it's, I think it's, this is going to sound really weird. I think it's okay to have those guy relationships, but to put boundaries on them, mm. you know, because I feel like there can be times where we need to be a good influence to other guys that don't understand that. Right. You know, we have a couple of those people that kind of float in and out of our lives a little right. bit in kind of our circle of hikers and kind awesome. of what we do outside out, and outdoors. But I think it's really important to think about, you know, it's like, well, if you can't give me this and you can't be this level for me, then I can't be your friend. Right. I mean, that's, that can be another type of friendship, but to really understand, you know, again, that's why Jesus had, that's why he called the disciples, right? Right. So he had a very specific reason for calling the guys that he did. And even the, the focus on family, considering them family, you know, considering them really brothers, and even the importance of what he knew that their ultimate goal would be right. after he went away, you know, he gave his very best. You know, I always want to be able to give my very best right. to you. Right. I know that you did that for me. So I want to encourage you, you know, we need to have friendships as guys. We need to have those relationships. Again, it doesn't always have to be this huge, heavy, revy, you know, religious moment all the time we're together. Um, but I do think that we always need to keep that in the forefront is, you know, maybe the Holy Spirit and maybe God has shared something with you that you need to share with someone that you know trust. You know, I can share things with Aaron. He can share things with me right. because we trust one another. We're building that trust in all different kinds of ways. So thank you again for, uh, for just being a part of, of what we do here at Man360, trying to help you be better. Again, the, the, the number 360 in every way. And that includes friendships and uh, being able to enjoy the outdoors together and uh, do things that glorify God. I feel like when we're outdoor, outdoors, we glorify God. Oh, I definitely, we're definitely closer to him. God. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Denver, we're a mile high, and we're even higher than that up here. I mean, think of the Garden of Eden. God created us to be in the wilderness, if you will, outdoors. Absolutely. He didn't, he didn't build a city for us to live in. Absolutely. That's as every outdoor, construct. Yeah, as every outdoor <laughs> Christian guy will tell you, right? That's not just <laughs> us telling you that on this, on this, uh, this program. But uh, we just really appreciate you. And, and uh, again, check with us, connect with us on man360.tv. And um, yeah, we just appreciate your friendship and your partnership here with what we do on the program on Man360. So thanks, Aaron, again, for being with us. No problem. Appreciate you. Love you. I love you You're too, the buddy. best. All right. This is the USS Constitution floating in Boston Harbor and I want to share a little bit of background information with you and help you understand why its nickname is Old Ironside. The USS Constitution is the oldest commissioned ship in the United States Navy. Naval officers and crew still serve a border. The Navy operates the ship as a historic site in cooperation with the National Park Service. If you are curious about how much of the USS Constitution is original, it's about 15% according to the Naval History and Heritage Command Detachment, Boston, including the lower futtocks, keel, and the deadwood at the stem and stern. Prior to independence, the 13 American colonies enjoyed protection from pirates and foreign navies under the British Royal Navy. Once the United States gained recognized independence, however, the young nation had to defend itself. In 1764, Congress authorized the construction of the first six warships to comprise the new United States Navy. Construction on the Constitution began in 1794, and the ship launched on October 21, 1797. She went on her first cruise the next year as the quasi-war with France emerged. Later, she served in engagements with pirates off the Barbary Coast in the Mediterranean. The greatest glory for Constitution, however, came during the War of 1812. Constitution's crew defeated four British frigates during three separate engagements. She earned the nickname Old Ironsides because the cannon fire from enemy ships seemed as if they couldn't penetrate her strong oak hull. Before and after these voyages, Constitution had to undergo constant repairs and refits. Most of that work throughout her service was here in Boston at the Charleston Navy Yard. Established in 1800, the yard was one of six commissioned for the purpose of keeping the Navy afloat. After over 200 years in the Navy, Constitution still calls Charleston home and relies on the same facilities for maintenance and repair. Across the pier from Constitution in Building 22 is the USS Constitution Museum. The museum serves as the memory and educational voice of USS Constitution and provides engaging and hands-on experiences for all visitors. Now with all that information about the USS Constitution, I really believe that it helps us illustrate three points that are very, very important to us as men of God. Number one is that it was constructed well. You know, you hear about the forefathers and the way that they constructed this ship. It wouldn't be able to float still 
here in Boston Harbor if it wasn't created and it wasn't structured well. And I really believe too, as well as our lives and just as men of God, that it's important that we understand that we have to put all of the things into our lives to help construct us, to be able to help us last and also last the test of time. Not only is that important, but also just the care that they've taken with this ship. You know, it's important to understand that this ship has been taken care of over the years. Same thing with your walk with God. If you're not spending time in the Word, you're not spending time listening to God, not taking time to even taking time out for church, taking time for all those things that we need to as men of God, very, very important. It helps us to be able to maintain our walk with God and help maintain the wellness of our walk with God. The third, and I really believe the most important thing, is the longevity of this ship. As I read in the notes, as you heard when we were walking around the ship, is that this ship is still commissioned by the U.S. Navy, which is so amazing. You know, this is a museum ship now, so it doesn't go out on tours and different things. You can see the ship behind where the Constitution is. Uh, that ship is still on, uh, on duty, so it would still go out and still fight wars. Obviously, it's metal. It's better, probably more well-constructed even than the wooden ship, the USS Constitution that's behind me. But to think of this, you know, maybe you're an older person. Maybe you have, are, have already lived your spiritual life as a man of God, and you're like, you know what? It's kind of time for me to wind down and for me to retire and to kind of be decommissioned. You know what? Even the USS Constitution is not decommissioned, even to be an example of what the U.S. Navy can be, and I really believe, too, as well as what men of, men of God need to have and need to be, can be able to be seen in those older men. So I really want to help encourage you today that the USS Constitution is very much and very similar to us in our walks with God. Let's do our 360 degree review of today's program. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Coach Weatherby. It's awesome to know that people like Coach Weatherby are using their life experiences in areas like sports to influence the next generation of student athletes for Christ. FCA is a great organization that is strategically placing people like Coach Weatherby in the lives of young people to help in so many important ways. My conversation with Aaron highlighted some great points to consider when choosing friends and those you put yourself around. I love what Aaron shared about not having sin management sessions as guys, but glory management sessions and sharing about what God is doing in your life. In our world, true friendship is getting harder and harder to find, but it's vitally important to have those relationships with other men who can not only hold you accountable, but push you to excellence in every area of your life. Our trip to Boston to see the USS Constitution was a great reminder about the power of usefulness even at an older age. Even though we'll all get older in this life, we can still have value and usefulness even as the Constitution's primary use is remembering the past and appreciating the development of the U.S. Navy and our armed services for this great country. MAN360 was developed with the intent to help men be complete in a 360-degree way through Christ, spiritually, physically, and mentally, to help men not only be useful members of society, but great men on the job and at home. I hope you enjoyed our time today and found my conversations with Coach Weatherby and Aaron useful to your life and that you had fun learning a little about old Ironsides in Boston. Please send us your prayer request or tell us what you think of the program on our website and feel free to contact us on Facebook and Instagram and we'll see you next week right here on MAN360.